Good afternoon, radio audience, and again, we want to thank you for tuning in to the Unadulterated Truth broadcast. This broadcast is a live Bible question and answer program with you, the radio listeners. At any point in time during this half hour broadcast, you may pick up your phones, dial the number 281 837 2222 with Bible questions or comments you'd like to make, and we will uh, listen to your uh, Bible comments and we want to give you Bible answers for your Bible questions. We're going to deal with the subject of mechanical instruments of music. Uh, exposing Orpheus Haywood. Uh, mechanical instruments of music and uh, exposing uh, Orpheus Hayward uh, and his doctrine. In Acts chapter 17 and verse number 24, uh, this is a letter written by uh, the Holy Spirit through Luke. The Bible says, God that made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelling not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with man's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life and breath and all things, and had made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth, and had determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. Mechanical instruments of music exposing uh, Orpheus Haywood at this time, Brother Javier Frias. Are you, you want to go ahead and elaborate on the subject and lay the foundation, my brother? Yes, yes. God bless you, Brother Henry. Thank you for opening us up. You know, this subject concerning mechanical instruments, it was uh, spoke on a few uh, weeks ago on Facebook by this uh, gentleman, Orpheus Hayward. And one of the key things that he spoke of concerning this subject was that it was unnecessary uh, to use instrumental music, but it is not sin to use them. It is not sin to use it, but it is unnecessary. Therefore, leaving a door open that Jesus Christ did not open uh, for the kingdom of God's dear son. And we want to talk about this subject because we in the kingdom of God are judges. We are priests. The Bible talks about we're priests. We're servants of God, and we're Christians. We're ministers. And we, ha we have to look at and read the subject and read the scriptures to find out what the answer is on this. In the book of Acts chapter 17, what our brother just read, uh, looking at verse 24, where it mentions God had made the world and all things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth, dwelling not in temples made with hands. That first word, hands, is uh, Greek 5499. I want to look at that definition. It is manufactured, that is, of human construction, wow. uh, made uh, with hands, as of a, a building. Now, the other one, in Acts chapter 17, the same chapter, looking at uh, verse 25, it says, Neither is worship uh, with men's hands as though he needed anything. Now, that word hands is a different Greek definition than the word hands we read in verse 24. That one is... Uh, G5495, which uh, means an instrument, uh, hand, literally, hollowness for grasping. So that gives us detail that God is now worshipped with a temple, a building that you make. He's now worshipped with an instrument. And we want to look at this and judge this correctly because there are certain churches of Christ that are using instrumental music in their worship. And so what Orpheus Hayward is involved in is he fellowships with these different churches of Christ and so he wants to be in agreement uh, with these other churches of Christ. He wants to leave a door open so if it does occur there is no conflict when he visits these locations and so we don't want to please men, we want to please God even as Galatians chapter 1 uh, teaches us looking at verse uh, number 10. He says, "For do I now persuade men or God or do I seek to please men for if I yet please men I should, he says, not be the servant of Christ. And we want to serve Christ. We want to bring this out to the open, make it manifest, to see what said the Lord, what said the scriptures. Because there is an answer, and we just read the answer uh, on this subject, whether God is worshipped with an instrument, whether he rejects it or not. He mentioned also uh, other scriptures uh, concerning this subject. Uh, we also read in Acts chapter 21, where he mentioned uh, the subject of James and also <coughs> Paul, where where it was mentioned that uh, James told uh, Paul to do a sacrifice in the, these verses. Acts 21, 23 said, Do therefore this that we say to thee, we have four men which have a vow on them, 
them take and purify thyself with them and be at charges with them that they may shave their heads and all may know that those things whereof they were informed concerning thee are nothing but that thou thyself also walks orderly and keepest uh, the law. As touching the Gentiles which believe, we have written and concluded that they observe no such thing, save only that they keep themselves from things offered to idols, and from blood, and from strangled, and from fornication. And so what Paul did was, according to the law in verse 26, where it mentions he took the men the next day, purifying himself with them, entered into the temple to signify the accomplishment of the days of purification, until that an offering should be offered for every one of them. That's an animal sacrifice. Now, I want to mention that uh, James gave this information to Paul, and that at this time, as Christians, they were keeping the law of both James and also Paul and the Jews. And he was mentioning that Jews, Jewish Christians, were keeping the law at this time. And he said, concerning the audacity, we, we wouldn't have the audacity to say that Paul committed sin but Paul in this scripture he did commit sin in taking Amen. the information yes. from James Amen. in doing the sacrifices in purifying himself in trying to keep the law he did commit sin that is a sin so you can't use this scripture and try to apply it to uh, saying that instruments can be used saying that it is an unnecessary but it's not sin it is a sin Amen. Amen. it is a sin even as in Galatians chapter 2 where I want to show this because Peter, Barnabas, John, James, a lot of the apostles were taking heed to the example of Peter. Amen. And if Paul didn't take heed, if he would have followed the footsteps of Peter, guess what? Paul would have been in, in the same sin that they were involved in. Amen. But Paul, see, he got tricked before in the past. Paul got tricked by James in accepting the law, accepting false teaching. And he got in trouble for it. Now, in this verse... Verse 11, Galatians 2, 11. But, Paul, but when Peter was come to Antioch, I withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. For before that, look who he mentions, certain came from James. He did eat with the Gentiles. But when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with him insomuch that Barnabas also was carried away with their uh, dissimulation. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Paul is rebuking Peter at this time for him sinning, being a hip hypocrite around the Gentiles, and also he's doing it before them as Barnabas and James and others were following in Peter's footsteps. You have to understand that the that the influence of Orpheus Hayward is powerful. He is eloquent. However, eloquency with false doctrine is a dangerous thing. Apollos was an eloquent man. But however, he needed to be corrected by Priscilla and Achilla. He needed to be born again of water and spirit and then be taught in the right way. To be eloquent is not a sin, but to be eloquent and teach a lie that is a sin. It's dangerous because it deceives the Amen. hearts of the simple. We read we Romans chapter 16, looking at verse 18. For they that are such serve not their own, our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches, they, de they deceive the hearts of the simple. Amen. It gives us instructions in Romans 16, 17. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offices contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned. It says, and avoid them. He even mentioned in his own video that he is not infallible. That he may have holes in his argument. And we are, at this time, talking about those holes Amen. in his argument. So those who listen to him or got deceived by him and not give heed to what he's, what, what he's taught. The number to call is 281-837-2222. If you have any questions or thoughts on this subject... Uh, you could call in at this time, Brother Henry. And before Brother Hamilton says, let me let me just say, that, Brother Javier, wonderful job, my brother. Now, let me let the uh, radio audience know this. Now, we came from Acts chapter 17, just in case some of you out there just think we're guilty like denominational teachers are of just pulling scriptures out of the context to support what we believe. Now, I started off reading Acts chapter 17, and the context of Acts 17 is Paul has gone to Athens, and he's encountered some people who did not know 
God at all, nor how to worship him. Matter of fact, he's dealing, when you go back to verse 23, they, they wanted to make sure they didn't miss a God, that they had an inscription to the unknown God. And Paul, so Paul started with the unknown God to describe them, uh, to tell them about the true and the living God who made of all nations, one, uh, made all nations from one blood. And so I want you to understand the context of Acts chapter 17, where we started off, is the context of Paul speaking to a group of people who don't know God or how to worship him. And he is very specific, as Javier has already explained, that God is not to be worshipped with anything that is made by the hands of men. And just in case you miss what we're saying, we're letting you know, based upon the word of God, there is no scripture that supports, when it comes to New Testament Christianity, that you are allowed to play instruments. We do not play in worship. I'm going to say that again. We do not play in worship. Denominational churches, they do play. They play in worship in, in more ways than one. But there are not any instructions you see in the New Testament where Christians ever use instruments that was made by the hands of man to worship God. Amen. Now let me say another thing real quick. I want you to know we have the responsibility as we're doing to mark those who call the visit. I know the line is lit up and we'll get to as many calls as we can. But let me give you scripture to show you what we're doing. We're marking Orpheus Haywood and all of those who link arms with him and play instrument and still wear the name Church of Christ on the outside of your building. You need to repent, <coughs> brothers. Mm -hmm. You need to repent and seek the old path. Amen. In Romans chapter 16 and verse 17, Paul makes it very clear. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them. Now, I've we already read this scripture. That calls division and offenses that are what? Contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. Orpheus, out of his own mouth, has advocated, I know there's no scriptures that says uh, we can play instruments. I didn't say that we could, but all I'm saying is I just can't say that it's a sin. Well, we're here to tell you, when you add something to something God told you, God's already told you what to do. When you add something else, that becomes sin, Orpheus Haywood. And I believe you knew that at one time, brother. Yes. You knew that. I've heard it come out of your mouth. I've heard some of your videos on YouTube when you were preaching sound doctrine. And so you go back to 2012, you can look at his video out of his own mouth when he was standing firm, flat-footed in the faith. He understood that instruments was wrong. And but now he wants to link arms, seems to be, and love the pleasure of this world, that he's willing to sell Jesus at the sake of compromising doctrine. And we cannot allow, we cannot allow that to happen. We gotta speak Amen. up Amen. for the Lord and we gotta stand on the doctrine of, of truth, okay? And, and it's ridiculous for you to even say that because the question would be to say that Paul and them were practicing the law. Think about this. How could they be holding on to the law when that priesthood had been destroyed? See, when you do stuff like that, brothers, get, get what he's saying. See, remember, the priesthood had been changed because Jesus is not a... Amen. Ask yourself a question. Is Jesus a high priest by the time you get to Acts where Paul pulls off what he's yeah, pulling absolutely. off? If he's a priest, Jesus, that is, he's from the tribe of Judah, how can Paul and them be holding on to the law for justification? Yeah, he been right and laid it out. And right. so you brothers knew that at one time. Right. And we're, we're begging you and beseeching you to get back on point. Because right now, God is showing you long suffering. He's being patient with you. But one day, you're going to die just like we will. Mm -hmm. And if you don't repent and get it right, heaven will not be your home. 281837 Brother Dwayne Hamilton. No, we have, we have two calls. Yeah, oh, okay. You want to take the calls? Okay, go ahead, caller. This is Brother Green calling. And as usual, brothers, I'm sitting here listening, and you all are doing a great job. And the comment that I was going to make, Brother Stevens, if you beat me to it, because I was going to say that I listened to part of that video and the doctrine had got so atrocious that I had to turn it off. Hmm. Because he made a comment, as you were saying, about Paul going back to the law. Hmm. And the thing I don't understand is if Paul was going back to the law and living according to the law, then what happened to the book of Romans? Because that's mainly what Paul Amen. talked about in the book of Romans about how we're not under the law. So, I mean, I, this brother, I've listened to some of his other videos and, you know, there, like you said, there are times he, he's preached some sound doctrine, but I don't know what's going on with this brother now. And I just pray that he come back to the truth. Amen. Amen. I'm going to hang up and continue. God bless you, Brother Green. Praise God. 281 837 2222. We have another call on the line. Is that right? No. Okay. 281 837 2222. Brother Dwayne Hamilton. First of all, God bless you, uh, Brother Green, for uh, the Man. call. 
Uh, you, you, you're, you're spot on with, with your assessment of the situation. Um, I just want to add just a few things. Um, I, I, I was sitting there riding up here because I, I, you know, and I was just kind of in my thoughts as I ride in my vehicle coming uh, to, the, to the building, uh, to you know, the air. And the thought that crossed my mind is, is that the Bible has been written the same way for hundreds of years. Man, you know, before right. anybody that's on the earth is, is alive was alive, the Bible said what it said. You know, it, its meanings haven't changed. The words haven't changed their meaning. Mm -hmm. the, 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 the point that God has made in his scriptures haven't changed. You know, and you come up and you learn the scriptures a certain way. Now, uh, like, all of us have been have, have re-looked at subjects and looked at things before and trying to make sure that you okay, solidify nope. your understanding uh, of the things that you've read. And that's a good thing. That's cool. Nope, but nope, once nope, you nope. look at the scripture and you understand what it says and you understand the meaning, at some point you have to start nailing down what you know, mm -hmm. because the Bible doesn't change. It, it's, it, it's a dangerous thing, and, and I'll, I'll be honest, I've been there before, yes. where you're looking at a subject, I'm going to go read and look at this subject again. And you look at it again, and you look at it again, and, then you, and, you, and you find yourself trying to find or find some way for it to say something different. And you have to be very, very careful about that. Man. I mean, because that's, that's where you err from the truth. You mean Because the, the reality is that the Bible says what it says. And, and I think Brother Javier brought out an excellent point uh, when he when he when he when he expounded on the fact that people get shook up, uh, you know, people have agendas. You know what I mean? They they, right. they get linked up with other brethren or whatever they think they have things they're trying to accomplish, whatever the case may be, and it causes them to go look, relook at subjects, start see if you can sort of find some wiggle room to, to be able to agree and reach across the aisle and stuff like that. But there but this, but the Christianity is not politics. You know what I mean? This is not Congress. You can't start trying to, try to figure out ways to try to like uh, appeal, make some type of agreement where we can all kind of get along. It doesn't work that way. It's God's side or the devil's side. There are only two. And, you, and there is no crossing sides. It's just Amen. one or the other. You know what I mean? And, so, and, and I say all that to, I say all that to say, this is, not, this is not about necessarily, and I want, I, want, I want to be clear, this is not altogether about, this, oh, let's just go beat up over his right. it, ain't, it ain't about this. It's about him. It's about anybody that does the same thing. You have to understand as a teacher, as a preacher, you have a responsibility when you open your mouth, or anybody for that matter. You have a responsibility to make sure that what you're saying is what God said. If you got on and you knew or you had a feeling that, hey, I may not be right, then maybe you shouldn't have said something. Man. Maybe you should have kept your mouth closed and go and looked at it some more before you open your mouth and start trying to teach people mm -hmm. things that you, you yourself are uncertain of. You know what I mean? The, the reality is this. The only reason why you should ever be trying to change your understanding of doctrine is if you saw another scripture that said, hey, okay, this, I missed this scripture. Or you saw, you looked at a word, you said, oh, man, this word means this. And now your understanding of the Bible has changed. But you you can you can never allow yourself or never uh, be allowed to change doctrine based on culture or society. And that's Amen. what that's what, unfortunately that's Amen. what a lot of our brothers are doing. Amen. They're looking at the society that they find themselves in, the culture that we're in now, and they're trying to find wiggle room in the scripture to try to appease the society that we're living in yes. to make people happy. And ultimately, if we're just being honest, it's to bring people into <clears throat> the pews. And, and they've, they've deceived themselves in thinking that our job is to seek and save that which is lost by any means necessary. But that is not our goal. Amen. That is not our, that is not our, uh, our, our charge from God is not to save souls by any means necessary. Because the reality of the matter is there is only one way to save the soul. And that is through the pure, unadulterated gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Point blank, period. The, we, we don't have any power to save, brethren. Radio audience. You don't have the power, and we gonna come to the caller. You don't have the power to save a soul. Amen. Just right. because you, just because a person says, "Hey, uh, you know, I, I, I thought what you said. I think I believe in God a little bit more now." That doesn't mean anything if they don't believe in in all of what God is saying. Amen. That's right. if, they, That's right. if they don't, if they don't put their full faith and trust in God, Amen. it doesn't mean anything. You halfway believe God. Amen. You don't get part. God don't need you. Amen. That's right. you God don't need, don't need me. Amen. That's right. And that's what you have. That's the one thing you have to understand. And everything, all that you're doing, you have to always remember. And I'm, I'm gonna slow down because I'm trying to get hyped. <laughs> you, 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 you have to remember that, brothers that are listening, sisters, radio audience. If anybody that has any sincerity towards God, you have to understand first and foremost when you approach God, God don't need you. Man. That's right. You need God. Amen. Man. And, and and if you approach the scripture from that perspective, and and you have a sincere desire to do. And please God, then you can be. Then He can be found of you. Amen. But if, but if but if you trying to go in and trying to find can make concessions, and trying to find ways where you can try to like broadness of things just a little bit enough so you can get a few more people in, 
you're going to not only kill others, but you're going to kill yourself. Amen. 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 Before Amen. Javier has a question that has been written in, let me just say this. Or Orpheus Amen. actually gave some indications that he was heading this route when they changed their name to Renaissance Church of Christ. Uh, they don't live in an area that's called Renaissance, a street that's called Renaissance. And the name itself, Renaissance, New Absolutely. Birth, it, it describes something that he's ready to, to invent that's new to help support that great facility, physical facility, Absolutely. that they built there in the in the Atlanta, uh, Georgia area. 281-837-2222. Uh, we have a caller. Yes. Go ahead, Brother Javier Frias. Hold on, caller. I just want to add this uh, concerning uh, just the subject we're speaking on. Uh, did God receive the animal sacrifice that uh, Paul did? Did he receive it after his death, burial, and resurrection? Is a question I want to ask. It was also mentioned the Pharisees that believed, but the Pharisees that believed, that became Christians, they were arguing with Paul concerning circumcision. Now, in Acts chapter 16, they, he said, did Paul sin? Paul did sin in Acts chapter 16, where it says, verse 3, him would have Paul have to go forward with him and took and circumcised him because of the Jews. He didn't circumcise him because of God. Uh, he circumcised him because of the Jews, amen. which were in those quarters amen. where they knew, look, all that his father, he says, was a Greek. So the intention that he did it was, was for the Jews, not for God. And therefore, he did sin. He sinned with James uh, as well. We have to be of the same mind, same way of thinking, same way of speaking. And what he said concerning uh, there may be holes in his argument. There are holes in his argument. Amen. My next question is, uh, is tithing a sin? Yes. Is animal sacrifice a, a sin? Yes. Yes. Circumcision. To teach it as part of God's ordinance is a sin. Amen. Instrumental music Praise today, uh, it is a sin. Amen. And so I just wanted to add that because if you build again those things which you destroyed, Galatians 2.18, you find yourself a transgressor. I want to add this Thank you, before we take the caller. There's a caller that came in and, and asked a question. He said, a caller wants to know where Brother Hamilton has been and what he has been doing. He has been missed. Amen. 281-837-22. You want to go ahead and respond real quick to that? Real quick, because we're okay, going to get to this. This ain't about me, but I appreciate the, I appreciate the sentiment. I uh, just had to go away and do some things as far as working for the family and that nature. We made some adjustments, so we're trying to find our way back. That's Amen. 281-837-2222. Amen. Go ahead, caller. You're on the air. I called to tell Ann, and I really want an understanding of when you said that you know the when we worship with uh, instruments, right. the sin. Yes. Uh, I didn't. I didn't understand that, and I just didn't understand what he just said. If we tied, yes, it's a sin. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm gonna hang up because okay. I'm pretty much Baptist. Okay. And That's fine. I'm yep, yep. Uh, Born again Christian, and I'm trying to read the Bible. Okay, here's what we'll Okay, ma'am, thank you for that. And real quickly, and, this, and we don't have time to cover it all. We'll, we'll pick up on this up next week. But let me just show you something, ma'am. When Jesus died on the cross, he, he, he established a, a new will or a new testament. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 14 and 15. Now, remember, if you were under the law, ma'am, uh, the priests had to come from the Levitical priesthood. Amen. The tithes went to the Levites. Now, the question you got to ask yourself, and I got to ask myself, is Jesus a priest today? If so, what tribe did he come from? Mm. He came from the tribe of Judah. Look at Hebrews chapter 7 so you can read it because the time is going to be well spent. I want to, what I want to show you, what the Hebrew writer is trying to show us, is that the law of Moses has been changed. It has been, it has been changed. We're under a new will, a new covenant. In the Hebrew chapter, the Old Testament, as far as the Old Testament, for our practices today. Hebrew chapter 7 and verse number 12, the Bible says, For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. Amen. And that's why when you see the church being established on the day of Pentecost, the church of Christ, that the people of God, that Jesus that he was going to build, you never see the saints when they came together collectively to worship God, you never see them playing instruments of music. Amen. You never see them told that they must pay the tithe of the tenth. You never see them sacrifice an animal. You never see them, as it relates to being justified in the sight of God, circumcising their male boys. Why? Because that was under the old law or the Levitical priesthood. Jesus came from the tribe of Judah. He was not from the tribe of Levi. And so that priesthood was done away with. And so therefore, none of us should be trying to go back to the old law and worship like they worship under the old law. Because when you do that, Paul is very clear as he writes to the Galatians, you fall from grace. Man. Moses brought the law, John 1, 17. Jesus brought grace and truth. And so we talk about giving. Not saying don't give, just real quickly. 
we don't start, tell people start with an M. We got some crooks in the Church of Christ mm -hmm. that are saying start with the 10. They're mm -hmm. preaching tied to Richard Barclay, who hangs with Orpheus Haywood, and uh, Billy Washington, and the list is endless. These guys are teaching start with the 10. What we teach people is love Jesus mm -hmm. and the Church of Christ, and you might want to give more than a 10. You might want to give 50% or 90% of your money, but you're not justified by starting with the 10. 281-837-2222. Brother Stephen Ozan, did you have something, brother? Real quick, man, our time. We got about four minutes. Yeah. Yes, real, real quick. I want to point out one thing that I think uh, our brother Orpheus, and he is our brother in Christ, and uh, we feel he's going in a different direction. Some of you may see us as attacking him, and we pray he That's doesn't see us as attacking, attacking him. The uh, but the idea is we're dealing with the doctrine. Because we do love him, but yes. we don't want all of the world to go to heaven and that brother be lost. Amen. It isn't about us vying against him or jealous of him. It's that we do love him. Amen. And open rebuke is better than secret, secret love. Amen. But I want to read for you Acts, I mean, forgive me, Galatians chapter 4, the fifth chapter of Galatians. I want to pull out verse 4. I have a few minutes. It says, Christ is become of none effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, now that engulfs all of it, mm -hmm. you are fallen from grace. You want to make it only the circumcision part. But Paul is clear in verse 4, the law itself, Amen. that will include all the components. Now one of the things Orpheus mentioned is that he did not know of any of the apostles speaking against the law wow. as being sin. Here is this text. Now, our brother said he may have some holes in what he said. I believe he's an honest man. I believe and I want to believe he's sincere. Man. I love him and I hope that he takes it. I don't claim to know much as he and he is light years ahead of me, but I believe our brother has missed a point. And this is it, Galatians 5 and 4. And so what does justify mean? Because I think you get confused if, if you start to think as Orpheus and others of you, it's not just him, but he has the most recent info out, so we're talking about him. You get confused on justification and justified. I want to read for you what justified in this particular chapter and verse of Galatians mean. 1, 3, 4, 4. You either have a G in front of yours or an NT from New Testament. The word means just or innocent, free justified, be righteous. Now, Orphus is stressing it's not binding, but we're saying when you do anything in honor of God, you must use the word justified because it makes you just, righteous, or innocent, meaning what you're doing can in no way harm you and your worship of God or others. Paul says if you go to the law and feel any part you're doing is innocent. Now, he pointed out we have the audacity to say Paul sinned, but Paul did sin yes. because he did think he was innocent by paying that vow, and he wasn't. James told them that they are zealous of the law and of Christianity in which you cannot serve two masters. You cannot be under two covenants. There's only one. Mm -hmm. And so we want to leave the faithful saints of God in Romans 16, 16. The churches of Christ salute you. What our brother is not looking at is sometimes you hear the word justified and you think that you're saying, okay, I'm going to leave Christianity and do only the law. No, justified means I feel I'm innocent. Paul felt he was innocent. He found he was wrong. And when you see his thrust in Galatians uh, 2, he is attacking Peter publicly before all for simply not going make a sacrifice. He just gets up, which any man has an option, from eating with people and bid them adieu, goodbye, and leave. But his motive oh, is because God. I fear, watch well, how I said, James's boys, they have come and they are pressing on me. And what did the law say? Come out from among the Gentiles. Don't eat with them. That's right. See, and he isn't showing, he isn't even showing that he's trying to convert them to the gospel. He is eating with, with them. them. It didn't say teaching. Right. And they are saying, why are you eating with them? They know that Gentiles get baptized. Mm -hmm. They are fully aware that Gentiles became proselytes. But he doesn't appear, obviously, to be showing any signs of trying to convert. He's just eating with them. And they're saying, you're not supposed to be doing that. Yeah. 
And that's why Paul tells him, you're not walking according to the gospel. And that's what makes it sin. And I want to read one Amen. more thing. Well, Paul labels it a sin in yes. Galatians 2 and 17. But if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also found sinners. Is that for Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. So Can that's another verse. I don't know if Brother Fritz read down, but uh, I'm just reemphasizing what he talked about. Go ahead, Brother. No, you, when you when you when you look when you look at that the scripture that you just pointed out, Acts chapter ten, Acts chapter ten, Peter is called to talk to uh, uh, Ananias and his family. You know what I mean? And that was an issue that he had even then. Mm -hmm. Was that Cornelius? You know, not, my, yeah, forgive me. Yeah, Cornelius. Cornelius. Mm -hmm. uh, and and. He had issues with trying to go and be amongst the Gentiles at that time. Yes. Now you run fast forward to Galatians chapter two. This is already, this already passed Galatians. I mean, Gentiles have already been in church, so this is after Acts chapter ten. He's still having issues with that. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And, and that was the point that I was making Amen. is that people get influenced. That's the point you made. People get influenced by their peers, mm -hmm. and it makes them start. Boy, makes them. It, ma it makes them like. Walk in disorder. Yeah, walk disorderly because they're influenced right. they want to have fellowship with their brother or people that they mm -hmm. want to have fellowship yeah. with. Mm -hmm. and that's, that's, that's exactly what happens with, with this kind of teaching. And Amen. not only this, but like any subject. You Amen. see what I'm saying? Amen, yeah, I mean, like, he, 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 Peter is an apostle, and he still shook up and be worried about the Jews and how they perceive things. So he tried to be slick and just like, like you said, just get up and move away. But his agenda is that because he's concerned about what these other guys are going to think about him. Amen. Say about him. You see what I'm saying? Amen. And so, and so like you say, you, you looking at this subject, the Bible is clear. It's been clear on this subject. And I, when I was looking at John chapter 7, when Jesus said, you know, if you, if you, if he that do the will of the Lord will know the doctrine. Amen. You see what I'm saying? Amen. But it, so if, if, if your only focus is to do God's will, then you know the truth. Amen. You don't get caught up in stuff like this. Amen. Where you, get, like, you start trying to like readjust yeah. what you're doing, whatever right. people are, what people are looking at. Right. Your only objective is like do God's will. That's right. Like and do what's right. Yeah. If, if that's your focus, then when you find truth, you understand truth. Amen. You believe truth. That's you right. teach truth. Amen. That's just it. You don't care about the consequences Amen. of that truth. But what Amen. happens is you start when you, you start feeling the pressure. Of other brethren doing things, mm -hmm. and I'm in the bed with them. Mm -hmm. so Amen. Is, Amen. I was good. I, and I, 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 I had to be worried yeah, about how this is going to how this I'm gonna mess up. Right. How this is going to mess up my my, yes. my presence or my my uh, uh, appearance with the brother. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. But I still want to be invited to the things. I still want to be going. Mm -hmm. no, 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 no. And he definitely, as Henry said, he definitely works with those guys. Of course he does. Yes, yes he works with them. But if you have a, I'm done. If you if you have another agenda, if you have another. You have some other, uh, uh, other motive, or you motive, have, sure. or you have some, or you have some other uh, 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 fears. Yeah, or, fear, a goal, you know, goal or, or right, or whatever. Other than mm -hmm. pleasing the Lord. Indeed, if, you, if there's anything it, else like in the way said, besides pleasing God and holding His doctrine. I, this is the word I'm hitting this in my brain, but that's what causes you to err from the truth. That's exactly. You right. see what I'm that's saying? Exactly right. And that, like I said, like I said, and if Peter's not exempt. And of course, the gentleman, or any of us, not exempt. Exactly. You have to make sure that your that your that your heart is singular. Amen. You know I mean? mm -hmm. that my heart is only set to to do the will of God. And I was thinking, I'm, I'm I'm done. I was thinking when I was riding here too. I was like, we have to make sure that you emphasize as a teacher and as a preacher. We have to take the same medicine that we serve. Mm -hmm. There you, you see go. What I'm saying? That's right. Like then we not only just trying to like. Just go ahead and beat up over there for ratings, you know what I mean? Right. Like, oh. sounds good. That's you what got a swallow. Exactly. Exactly. Like, it applies. Amen. You amen. have to look at the script. You have to... Well, you, you said so that you've things. already said that uh, while we were live. You said I've been down the road, yeah, you know, man. as far as having yeah. to look at and re look and, at and, scripture, and, 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 and he oh, has to and he yeah. has to have the same approach, right? Yes. But when the you, difference is, brother Hamilton, and like you're saying, the difference is, and we're gonna pray for this brother. Yeah. That his heart, he has to have a heart of David. Yes. He has. A, if he's sincere, he has a heart of David. We hope that he does. When he realizes he's wrong. Based upon what the, what God has said, we hope that He would repent. Amen. The difference That's between the you know right. people like you know Orpheus and and, and, and others and and, and the Davids is, is is yeah you mm -hmm. have to mm -hmm. and you know yeah. you know we, we look at that scripture First Corinthians fifteen thirty three evil communication corrupt good manners yes. and I know we use that scripture a, a lot and, and but we understand the context of that is when Paul writes that there were some people that were didn't believe there was going to be a resurrection. That's right. And that doctrine was being prevalent so much that some started believing yes. that. Mm -hmm. And so Paul basically tell them, hey, be not deceived. 
Mm -hmm. Evil communication corrupts. I mean, you gotta watch right. the people you hang around because what they're teaching will affect you if it you're not sure strong with them. And so Orpheus has found himself, like you said, in the bed with the Barclay, Richard mm -hmm. Barclay, yeah. uh, his father-in-law, Billy Water, let him call himself doctor. And I'm sure he's seen errors in their life yes. uh, and things they've done wrong. And yes. so he probably, he may have the mentality where they can't say nothing about me because I know what they're doing. You know, yes. I know some but things God they're all doing. But there is you go. Doing. That's what we cannot miss. Please. Men. That's right. Right. Or whoever. And so the attack yes, comes three exactly ways. Right. Lust of the eyes, lust of the flesh, pride of life. Yeah. That's the only way Satan attacks. So, but if you're built up on pride and want to be lifted up like the Pharisees, you want your reward down here, mm -hmm. then you won't see Jesus. You won't see Jesus clearly. Sure. You know, these guys muddy the water, so you can't see him like you need to see Jesus. So. That's right. And that's exactly well, the point that Jesus was making in John chapter 7. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. He's no longer doing the, the campaign for Christ thing. He resigned from that. Okay. They had him at a, uh, he was doing a, uh, some type a campaign for Christ that he do every year, and so he stepped down. I have a question. It. So you're saying West End Church of Christ has the name? They changed the name to Renaissance. They moved the location. They built a, a beautiful <laughs> building, a million plus dollars. That facility. means new birth. That's what Renaissance but means. Does it, is it even Renaissance Church not of Christ? Renaissance area. The Renaissance, street is, is not it just Renaissance, Renaissance Church? Renaissance Church of Christ. They okay, still okay, okay, hold on, hold on, that's not. Yeah, he's still it, holding he, on to that which remains. It's still, it's still a new church of Christ. Right, yeah, new yeah. birth church of Christ. New birth, so. that's what you got to watch. That so name not, means not, not the birth that you got from Jesus. No, not the that. Spirit. It was a new birth. Afterbirth. Afterbirth. 